Hello, this is Thomas with Polyga, and I'm here to do a short little tutorial on how to use Extract 3D, our SOLIDWORKS add-on, to reverse engineer uh, organic surfaces from 3D scan data um, using the tools in the plugin. And I'm going to walk through using, using this example here, which is a small little turbine blade that I did a very quick reverse engineering through to uh, show a couple of different techniques on how you can grab surfaces from scan data quickly and easily and how to approach essentially a part like this. So this is the finished product. Um, so I'm going to put this away and start from a variety of different steps and I'll walk through, through them all. Uh, so I'm going to, because this is sort of more of an advanced tutorial, I'm going to skip the beginning steps of aligning the part into the geometry and also doing the basic sketching and go straight to the surfacing portion of it. So the part that I'm interested in, in this particular part, the first thing I want to do is to get at least the overall shape of this part, which is a cone shape. Um, and the way I do that, and let me just hide the, uh, the way I do that is to do a cross section um, across this into the middle along the axes of this part and just do a quick revol revolve. And that'll give me the uh, basic shape um, that looks something like this. And I'll kind of, I'll walk through exactly how I did it. So I just took the front plane and did a cross section of the part uh, right here. And I'm just going to hide the, uh, Geometry, you can see it. Uh, the out red outline here shows the cross section apart. Um, as you can kind of see, we have some missing gaps here where because we just have a single cross section, it doesn't give us all the information that we need. Um, so we can use the multiple slices functionality. And the way you do that is by selecting an axis, clicking multiple sli uh, uh, slices, and apply. And you can see we get uh, slices that uh, revolve around this particular part. And what we want to do is merge the slices so that you get all the information back onto your sync to your original plane. So now we have a nice cross section um, that pr comprises about uh, five or six different slices, all uh, composited on top of each other. And once we have that, we just take our uh, sketch here, as you can see in blue. And what I've done is essentially just uh, sketched. Um, along the outline, along the average of all my different um, different outlines there, or the different uh, slices. What I've also done is to extend it out a little bit more than normal. Um, the reason I do that is later on I want to do a revolve cut, and by doing it like this I can get a nice clean cut around the entirety of the part. So uh, all we did here was slice the outline of that and do a quick revolve, and that gives us uh, the shape that we want right here. So let, let's get right to it, which is doing um, creating this this fan blade here or this little blade here. Um, I don't have to do all of them. I just need to do one of them because, as you can see, they, they repeat in a circle here. So what I'm going to do is to reverse engineer just one of these um, blades, and then I'll do a circular pattern all around and then I'll trim the edges and I'll get us to the part that I showed you earlier. The first part of the blade that we're going to do is probably one of the more complicated ones. And the way we're going to do this is using a uh, lofted surface tool. So what we'll do is create a series of segments along here and then we'll loft it. And we'll do it using the Create 3D Entity tool here. So I've created a uh, Enter the 3D Entity tool. I want to create a series of 3D lines, and I'm going to do them all as new sketches. So it's relatively straightforward. Just click here, here, create, and that creates a little line here. You have to be careful when you draw these lines that you don't get too close to the edge because that's going to throw off the uh, shape of your curve. As long as we're um, right by the middle of it, we'll be in good shape. And as I drop these lines on here, uh, the the plugin is automatically going into the 3D data and uh, grabbing the shape of it. So there's a nice couple of little tools for undoing things if you make a mess. <clears throat> and there we go. We have a whole series of lines here uh, that we can use to uh, create our arc. 
so I'm done with that. Now I have a series of uh, series of uh, sketches here that I'm going to use. I'm just going to hide that for now. So what I'll do is to do a lofted surface relatively easy. I'll just start here and uh, work my way up. And as you do this, if SolidWorks guesses the winding order incorrectly, it's uh, pretty easy to do a quick adjustment. So there we go. We have a nice little uh, surface here. That represents uh, our surface. So what we want to do is, because of the shape of this, we, we want it to be a little bit bigger than it actually is. Because what we'll do is make everything a little bit bigger and then we'll trim it off uh, using the various different sizes to create our shape. So we just do a quick extend surface and uh, extend it by, I think, one millimeter should be enough. This one is not quite. So we'll extend that one. We have lots of room on that side of it. Just want to make sure this top section, um, we've got enough room to to to, uh, to cover a trim here. There we go. So <clears throat> the edges of this uh, surface don't matter too much as long as the core shape of it matches what we want. So the next step is to do uh, this little section here and we'll do a slightly different way. So what we'll do here is because it's just a straight line, we can create a, uh, we're just going to create this cross section right along here. We'll draw a spline along that shape and extend it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a plane right down the middle of this. And let me just reorientate it so it's a little bit easier um, to, to see that shape here. So what we do is we can create a uh, plane. Just select some points. We'll start down here. And you can see we have a plane that cuts right through uh, the top part, top part of that. Create a plane, and with that plane, we'll we'll slice it. And as you can kind of see, that slice gives us a very nice uh, cross section along that plane. So we'll go with that, and then we're going to sketch right on that plane. Uh, where are we? There we go. So what we do is uh, fit a curve right along the uh, the extents of this. So w because we're in 2D, we can use all the Extract 2D fitting tools. So that makes life a little bit easier. So we'll start with a curve. And actually, I don't have to be particularly precise here um, because When I'm done, I can just select that, go to Extract 3D and tell it to uh, snap to the closest point, and it auto snaps <clears throat> the, my uh, curve to the closest points that I'm interested in, so that I just did approximately. So that's all I really need. I've got a singular spline right there, and from there I can take that into a surface and just uh, extrude that surface up. So I'll take that. What I wanted to do is to have that as a mid plane. And uh, I can just put it to two millimeters. Uh, I probably want it a little bit bigger than that just because I wanted to uh, connect with everybody else. So three millimeters looks uh, pretty good. She might do a little bit more. There we go. So <clears throat> that's a second way that we can create a curve that's nice and clean. And then lastly, we I'm going to create this face over here. And creating this face over here uh, is relatively straightforward as well. So 
to do this flat face, what I'll do is to use uh, to draw some splines onto here directly, and then I'll use it as a field surface. So let's go back to Extract 3D, uh, create a 3D entity. Instead of lines, I'm just going to create a spline directly. And the way I do it is this one, two, three, four. One is a spline. And I've, I've asked it to create a new sketch, but I don't want that much sketches, so I'm going to have my ad additional splines go into the same sketch. So I'm, I want it all to go to sketch 11 there. So now that I've done that side, I'll do the same on the other side. I also do, I tend to like to match the number of knot points just because it makes for uh, cleaner surfaces. Don't worry if the lines don't look exactly like what you uh, think they should, because when you click OK, it does get converted to a spline. The preview just shows lines. So we'll probably do about 10 or 12 knot points on the top. And if it helps, you can uh, hide, uh, hide, was it? hide your solids too, if you don't want to see them. Just because they can sometimes get in the way in terms of selection and all that kind of stuff. So go back here. Also, if you want a cleaner cut line, what you can do is, because uh, I just eyeballed this one for the sake of this demonstration, what you can do also is to take uh, this bottom plane here, extrude it up a little bit, and use that as a guide for uh, selection. So you have a really nice clean line to create that surface. I, I didn't do it for this application because uh, I think just need to show, uh, get the point across here. Uh, so I'm just going to connect these up points because they were separate splines so I want the endpoints to touch. So it's gonna let's do that manually. And there you go. Um, that gives us a uh, connected surface and now we can just take this surface and and create a well, get this, make the this sketch, take the sketch and create a surface out of it. Just click on that. And that creates a surface that uh, we're interested in here. And what we can then do is to just extend the surface by a little bit. So that uh, we can, uh, was it, uh, <clears throat> cut everything off and put it together. So I've done three different surfaces three different ways now. And what I'll do is I'll, instead of doing continuing uh, and having you sit through it, I'm just going to go to a file that uh, where I've already done most of the sectioning already. So in this version, this in this document, I've already done the work of of doing all the different sides of it, including doing a uh, revolve around the outside of it uh, to to do the to do this end cap portion of it as well as to uh, finish everything off here. As you can see, I have surfaces covering all the edge of it, all the different edges. And what you want to then do is to do a trim operation uh, <clears throat> on to the, all the extra pieces. So at the end, once you trim it, you get a surface shape that looks like this, and everything's been uh, trimmed away to the, to the different edges here. And the trim was pretty straightforward, as you can see. I took all my surfaces and then deleted everything else that I wasn't interested in. So the big one is just the trimming. And let me just uh, hide the mesh so you can see uh, the fan blade here. You can see that it's all been trimmed away and it, it has the shape that I'm interested in. <clears throat> so now here, now it's the fun part actually, which is to now uh, replicate this and trim out the edge of it so that it all looks good. So now that we've got the trim, all we have to do 
is to do a uh, circular pattern. And what we want is uh, the body right here, that trim surface, and the center of it will be our axis with uh, that axis right there. And I've done this a couple of times, so I know it's 60 degrees, and 60 degrees gives us a nice, uh, fits, fits the, uh, that blade onto all the other ones. And, and there you go. We're halfway there now. Well, more than halfway, we're almost done. So now that we have the circular pattern, what I want to do next is intersect everything together so we have a single object. So I can do that by using the intersect function, just clicking on uh, all the different pieces that we're interested in and intersecting that all together so that uh, they're one single piece. There we go. And I want to consume the surfaces as well so everything's together. So now that I've, I've intersected it, I got a single part here. And what I'll do is uh, to do the last bit of it, just to cut out the edge. And I can do that using the sketch here that I previously used to revolve. So I'm going to use that to do a uh, revolve cut using my center right there. And there we go. And just want that part of the inside part, not the outside part. And there we go. Um, it's a little bit hard to see because the mesh and the uh, surface are on top of each other. So what we can do is just move everything just so we can have a nice uh, clean look. And there you go. Um, a quick little tutorial on how to draw organic surfaces off of scan data using the tools in Extract 3D and uh, various different surfacing tools that are part of SolidWorks. Um, using some pretty simple tools, you can very quickly uh, build up some nice surfaces that, uh, that would be hard to do otherwise. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. And uh, we have a lot of other ones on our website, so please check out any other ones that you might find interesting. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.